Keeping in a similar idea of digital equity, we now will turn to our conversation in partnership with Visa with Dimitrios Morantis, Senior Vice President of Global Government Engagement at Visa, and Mark Isakowitz, Vice President of Global of Government Affairs and Public Policy for the US and Canada at Google, and Julie Hyman, anchor for Yahoo Finance. Julie? Thanks so much, appreciate it. So we're gonna be talking about digital equity and what our participants are doing to advance digital equity and what you can do to advance digital equity. And I wanna sort of set the scene briefly by defining what we mean by digital equity. Certainly there has been an uptick in conversation about it over the past six months amidst the coronavirus pandemic, which as we know has sort of peeled away some of um, the veneer over what maybe has hidden digital inequity. Um, and now we see it more clearly, but there is still much to be done on this topic. Demetrios, I want to start with you, um, because when it comes to your work on digital equity, how would you define it? What are the most sort of acute problems and issues when it comes to digital equity? Uh, thanks, Julie. I think for us at Visa, we look at digital equity and we think about empowerment ensuring that all individuals and businesses really are able to participate in the benefits of digital platforms. And COVID has really um, exacerbated um, some of the digital inequities um, that we've seen by accelerating trends, um, you know, particularly in the area of e-commerce, where e-commerce growth has just you know, boomed. Um, in April 2020 alone, e-commerce grew by 18%. And what does that mean? It means that businesses that are digitally enabled are the ones that are most likely to be successful and are the ones that are most likely to weather the economic hit um, caused by COVID. When you look at small businesses, you see that a majority of small businesses are not online. They don't have an online presence. And as a result, small businesses have been probably the hardest hit by COVID. And that's why we at Visa are trying to use the power of our network to be able to spur the small business recovery. Um, we've done a lot of things in the course of the past few months. We've committed to digitally enable 50 million small and micro businesses by really getting them online um, so that they're able to benefit from, from e-commerce. We've created small business hubs to provide online resources um, for small businesses as they recover. We have street teams in about 15 countries that are going store to store to provide one-on-one -on -one, um, help and assistance to small merchants, merchants to help you know, ramp them up in areas like touchless commerce. Um, we've launched the Visa Economic Empowerment Institute to really focus on small business recovery from a social and racial justice lens. And finally, the Visa Foundation has committed $210 million to help small businesses, particularly women-owned, recover from, from the economic ravages of COVID. So by doing these things, we're trying to use the power of Visa's network to help power the recovery in a way that helps to promote digital equity. Um, Mark, I want to ask you about this theme as well, because we talked about in advance of this that a lot of at least the popular culture conversation around digital equity has been in things like education, for example, that some kids who are doing remote learning don't have the same access either to hardware or to connectivity that other of their peers do. When it comes to businesses and kind of what Demetrius alluded to, is it a resource problem? Is it a strategy problem? What do you see as, as the biggest issue? Yeah, Julie, thanks for the question. And Demetrius, thanks to, to Visa for sponsoring the session here at Concordia. Um, I think I think it's, it's a resource uh, problem and it's also a know-how problem. You know, we've, we've seen, you'll see some similarities in what Demetrius and I say. We've seen in, in some of our survey work that since COVID and this, this terrible tragedy of COVID, and, but we've learned so much, one in three small businesses have said, but for digital tools, their doors would now be closed. And then when you, and then when you ask people, do you, do you feel like you, you were prepared digitally among the businesses that say they were prepared digitally for, for what that means, their revenue has been 4X what the business has, businesses who say they, they weren't prepared. 
So you can see the disparity there. That leads you right to the digital equity conversation. To your question on is it, is it uh, resources or strategy and know-how, really it's both. You know, after the crisis started, we did uh, over $800 million in grants, much of that to small business. A lot of that was ad credits because small businesses need to, to advertise, you know, what their new hours are and if they're doing, if they're doing a pickup or, and, and so forth. And so we did that through, um, through ad grants, but also through uh, giving money to groups like the Opportunity Finance Network that helps uh, businesses in, in tougher areas maybe have access uh, to capital. So some of it is, some of it is money, but, but as, as people know, you know our, our tools uh, are free. So some of it is you just have to help business owners know how to use it. So you know, when you go on Google search, there's, there's something called Google My Business and helping business owners know how to use that and what to put in their knowledge panel. And some of the facts that I just said about, you know, we'll carry the food out to your, your car and, 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 uh, and having all that. So some of this is, is training and we have, um, uh, you know, programs. We've trained uh, s- about 70 million people globally since uh, 2017 um, in a program called Grow with Google, so we have seminars and ways of of training people. So um, I I think it's both. You know, as a company, uh, people used to come to Google just to to get a question answered, and now we've tried to evolve into a platform that helps people uh, get things done, uh, so that they can get knowledge. You know, whether it's knowledge, health, happiness, or success, all of the above, we want them to be able to get it on our platform, but they got to know how to use it. And if they have a business, you're right. They do have to have the resources to get the word out uh, at a time where they may not be seeing their current customers and they may not have a way to reach out to, um, uh, to new customers. And by the way, they also need ways to be in touch with their employees. And so one of the things we have is, is uh, Google, you know, Google meet, which is our, our video conferencing platform. We, we now have it free for small business because a company to succeed has to have its culture and be in touch. And we want to help people do that too. Which we happen to use, by the way, as a platform um, for my show on Yahoo Finance, coincidentally, I should add. I mean, I would say it's interesting being in the West, right, um, in on the globe, being perhaps in a privileged, privileged position. I'm always surprised when I go to look up a business provider and they don't have information online but certainly there are lots of businesses that don't and and Demetrius when you look around the world and also by sort of type of business where do you think that um, people and businesses tend to need the most help sort of geographically but also by type of business I think I mean I think if you look geographically so we just did a study recently um we commissioned a survey in the UK, Australia, Canada, Mexico, South Africa um and India. Um and it's very interesting the study, you know, the survey revealed that um a preponderance of the respondents basically said having access to the internet is what's going to make or break their own economic recovery. Um, so that's across the developed world and the developing world uh, in this survey. Um, and then when you dig down a little bit deeper, you know, you sort of see the different types of habits that, um, uh, that you know, come up in whether you're in South Africa or whether in the United States or whether you're in, you're in, you're in India. But the bottom line, Julie, is that businesses need access to the internet. They need access to e-commerce. They need digital platforms in order to be able to recover from COVID. And that's what's going to power it. Whether you're a mom and pop store, you know, on a high street, or whether you're, you know, are a more sophisticated business, um, you're going to need that access uh, in order to be able to really recover from the ravages of COVID. And I believe this has been an issue, Mark, for Google, right, is is getting that connectivity as well. I mean, um, Demetrios, you're talking about going to these businesses as well and trying to improve that connection. Mark, what is Google doing on that front? Well, um, to, on your first question, I do think it's restaurant, retail, bricks and, bricks and mortar, 
uh, you know, in smaller towns and in the uh, countryside may, may be having more trouble. You know, we are, we on, in terms of having access to uh, broadband and Wi-Fi in, in the first place, we are trying to work on that too. You know, we have certain jurisdictions. We've done uh, rolling study halls so that, that kids can actually, while they're on their school bus, uh, essentially be in a Wi-Fi hotspot. We have another, uh, uh, we have another program uh, through one of our subsidiaries, uh, Fiber, to essentially uh, create broadband access in libraries and in other uh, locations. And then the other thing we're doing, which isn't directly to your question, is we're, we're, we also want people to have digital skills so they can get a job in one of these fields. So we, we have a program called IT Cert, where um, you know the, some of the programs are three months or six months, but whether it's uh, data analytics, uh, analytics uh, or user experience or other things where workers, people who are trying to get back into this job market, uh, learn the skills again, so they have access uh, to to the digital future. So that again, whether they're a small business owner or they want to work for a small business, uh, they can go online right now and and go to Google's IT Cert program and maybe sign up for a class and get a, a good job w- without having to get a, a four year degree. So the, we on this panel, we're defining access several different ways. Um, which is the digital tools, the broadband, but also the, the skills to use these things. And how are both of your companies working together? I mean, one of the cruxes of the, the reasons for Concordia is about people coming together to try and solve some of these problems, and in many cases, public-private partnerships. So, Demetrius, um, what are you at Visa? How are you working with some other entities, whether they be public or private, um, on some of these issues. Yeah, I mean, we you know sit at the center of of an ecosystem, and you know all of us are are more powerful when we work in tandem with each other. So we do that at so many different levels. You know, from a with governments, for example, throughout COVID, we partnered with you know whether it's the U.S. or South Africa or Egypt or the Dominican Republic or Guatemala on how to most efficiently disperse uh, COVID-related subsidies to to citizens. Um, At the micro level, we have partnerships um, throughout throughout the world um, with with different organizations to really help um, increase access for small businesses um, to different um, opportunities. For example, we have a really cool partnership um, with iFundWomen we have this um, really great partnership with an organization called Hand in Hand International in Kenya, where we're working with um, a majority of women-owned um, small businesses to help provide uh, them the tools to start, run, and grow. Um, and then you have partnerships also at the policy level where um, you really have to think about what are the types of policies that you want to put in place to actually drive access to, to, to digital equity. So we've been working closely, for example, with the World Economic Forum on, you know, how to improve cross-border flows of data. How do you improve cross-border trade? Um, And what's the best ways of doing that? We recently co-authored a paper with the World Economic Forum on that subject. So partnerships are critical and working, whether it's with another company, with a think tank or with uh, another government, those are really ways that we at Visa can use the power of our network to help drive increased access to digital equity. And Mark, same, same question for you. Yeah, I, I think this question gives me an opportunity in terms of partnerships to talk about the other side of it, which is you not only have digital access, but once people have digital access, you want to make sure they have quality information. So when you, in, in the case of when you have the onset of a uh, once in a century uh, pandemic, our first priority was to make sure, you know, people had access to good information about, you know, where can I, where can I go and, and what do I do if I have a temperature and all that. And so when you talk about partnerships, part of our partnerships have been, you know, whether it's with the CDC or local health authorities or the WHO, making sure people have quick access through, to our platforms to where they can get a test, you know, what screening thing they can use, what is good information, and also 
um, weeding out the bad information, you know, which is something we work very hard at and people encourage us even more to get hard at. But, you know, we, we try to uh, minimize the misinformation. So quality information is one, uh, one piece of partnerships. I think there's a lot of partnerships in the education space. I mentioned the, the rolling study halls. Uh, we did something with our, our home state of California to uh, donate, I think it was uh, 1,000 uh, Wi-Fi hotspots in a rural area that, that, the, that the governor was concentrating on. So we try to take that input and, and help, uh, help where we can. And, um, and, and so it's, it's things like that. It's working with governments um, and working with uh, school systems. And then in, in this case of a pandemic, again, because, because so many people rely on Google for, for basic helpfulness and what they're going to do during the day, working with, with healthcare authorities uh, so that people can stay safe while they try to re-engage in this economy. Now, both of you are obviously tech companies, but as you're talking, it occurs to me, just from a sort of nuts and bolts perspective, like, how are you connecting with these people who need help? In other words, Demetrius, I think you mentioned going out, reaching out to these small and medium-sized businesses to offer them help. Um, does that physically mean people going? Does it mean, you know, if not physically going, how do you find them if they don't already have the connectivity? Um and how have you guys um, learned and processed that challenge uh, over the course of the pandemic? Yeah, it's 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 everything, actually. I mean, for example, we have online resources. So we have um, these these small business hubs, which we have in 20 markets around the world. That's really sort of the, a go to source for small businesses as they're recovering from the pandemic, you know, a how-to guide on, on how to start, run, and grow your business. And then complementing that, um, we have these things that I mentioned earlier, which, which I love, our street teams, which we have um, deployed in, in 15 markets around the world, where it is, it's physically people going from store to store and providing one-on-one -on -one training for particularly for small merchants to help them get digitally enabled, to help them understand how to deploy contactless technology, to help them with the tools that they're gonna need to use to get online um, and to help succeed in a more e-commerce environment. So it's really, it's really, it's really everything, Julie. It's it's online, it's physical, um, and it's working in partnership with with companies across the ecosystem and with governments to really get not just the word out, but to get in the hands of small businesses, the tools they need to succeed as they start run and grow. Yeah, I, I, it, yeah, I think that's really well said, uh, Demetrius. And, um, you know, I think it's a, it's a combination of a whole bunch of things. I mentioned we have the training program, Grow with Google, that 70 million people globally have participated in since 2017, that, that program continues. People can still do it in, in like a format that we're doing it now. We've switched it to, it was, it was in person. We had, you know, we had offices in New York city and elsewhere people could come by and sign up for a class to, to figure out how to use uh, digital tools. Now it's, uh, now it's all online. So uh, that's, that's one way we're doing it. And it is, it is about partnerships. We have partnerships with employers um, who 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 have an interest in us, our digital scaling program, and that may help take us to uh, to to somebody else. And and again, it's trying to help people make sure they know what you know. We have a, a big uh, a big platform uh, to to help people just through Google search. And by the way, we talked about partnerships before. You know, then you have the whole world of YouTube um, creators. Um, who, who also, uh, you know, that's become a great resource for, for education, um, and how to on using digital skills, but also on how to do all, all sorts of things. So, uh, we have a, a big platform to educate and then plus partnerships with employers. So we know, uh, who, who needs to, to learn more in terms of digital skilling and, and maybe get to that person we haven't gotten to yet. And then also the, 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 the broadband programs I mentioned. So as the people who are attending uh, Concordia 
um, watch this and listen to what you two are saying, what can they then take back? I guess not take back home because they probably are at home, but what are some of some action steps that organizations and individuals can take on the digital equity front, um, drawing from what you two are are talking about? Uh, Demetrius, I'll start with you again. Yeah, I I mean, taking this up, I think, to a bit of a more of a macro level, the thing that concerns me the most as a real inhibitor to, to COVID recovery is the increasing tendency of governments around the world to restrict cross-border data flows. When you restrict cross-border data flows, you restrict digital trade. When you restrict digital trade, you restrict the ability of small businesses, the backbone of everybody's economy, to get online um, and to participate in in the expansion of e-commerce. It's very concerning, and I do think it's a real risk to recovery from COVID, Um, And so when we talk to governments, um, we really stress that, um, you know, going this trend towards data localization is a trend that's really going to undermine the ability of small businesses in particular to recover from COVID. And so if people are going to take something away from this, it's really collectively, you know, focusing on small business recovery and focusing on removing barriers to that. The World Bank estimated that removal of barriers to cross-border um, data flows would increase global productivity by 4.5%. That's a staggering figure, particularly in the wake of a huge global pandemic and the economic consequences that we're seeing now. So ridding ourselves of of restrictions to digital trade is the one of the best ways that we can work with governments um, and other businesses to really remove barriers to small business recovery from this pandemic yeah demetrius i i just i i want to endorse that point you've you've made it a a couple times on cross-border data flows and we're certainly certainly with you uh on that uh, Julie, I, I think that one of the things that I would like the audience to think about is just uh, the urgency uh, of the, the whole issue. I, I mean, I'll just say in a U.S. context, I think there's a Goldman Sachs study saying that uh, nine out of 10 small businesses uh, are about to be out of their uh, PPP money, pay, Paycheck Protection Program money. And in the absence of, of, of an additional bill, and people may be for or against an additional bill, but again, a lot of what we talked about is resources and know-how, and things are getting really tight on Main Street, uh, in, in whether it's rural areas or in the city, things are getting really tight, and uh, companies are going to need digital tools, again, to get the word out and keep in touch with their, their customers and their employees, whether they're new customers or old customers. So. I think part of what we can work on together, and it's not a terribly specific suggestion, is just the urgency of focusing on this issue and, you know, having public-private partnerships to increase access uh, to to the internet in the first place. But then once people get there, making sure we have the job training so so people can get the job and then that and then have the small businesses provide the jobs. I think we all know the statistic, two-thirds of all new jobs. Uh, come out of come out of small businesses, and then there's another statistic saying about two thirds of the new jobs uh, require some form of digital skills. So really focusing on the urgency of it. That as we fight through this pandemic, of staying focused on this issue, working through resources, education, and training, I think is something that if if every if all the opinion leaders listening to the sound of my voice focused on it, uh, it'll 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 help uh, help get us through this. Well, that brings us about to the end of this, and I think that's a really good place to end it, talking about what's at stake when we talk about this issue of digital equity. Um, It really has to do with the prosperity of small businesses, which has to do with the prosperity of not just the U.S. economy, but the global economy. Um, So I think that is a a good place to end it, and I hope everyone um, has the opportunity to take action on this as well. Mark, thank you so much. Demetrios, thank you so much. It has been a pleasure. Thank you.